Hey guys, it's Cooper Rich here from Kick It to Scoot. I am the sole admin of AFL information, trade rumors, and results. You want to be part of the show, Kick It Scoot? Send through your questions through the Facebook link, which I'll attach every show on the post. And if you want to email me at aflinfolive at gmail.com, send through your questions and you may feature on the show and be answered your question from yours truly, Cooper Gretsch, for free. Yes, for free. If you want to be on the show, as I said, send it through and I'll get back to you. Go Saints. Too easy, this is. Yes, Scoops, come on, mate. Keep going. Hello everyone and welcome to a very special edition of Ticket Scoops. I'm your host, Cooper Gretsch, the sole admin of AFL Information, Trade Rumours and Results. And what a very, very big virtual edition of Ticket Scoops do I have for you guys today. Not only will you be seeing all our famous, all my famous segments, including Scoops Goes Bang, the review and preview of the rounds just gone and upcoming, the rolling All-Australian team, my brown low votes, your audio messages and a lot of them. We've got two huge segments also today. A goal reenactment, my goal reenactment of Sam Lloyd when he played for the Richmond Footy Club against the Sydney Swans at the G after the siren got from about 45 metres out. You're going to see my goal reenactment of that, which was recorded a while ago. You'll see uh, this was pre lockdown, this recording. So if you're wondering why I was out and about, that was because it was pre locked before the lockdown. Uh, and also, this, what I'm deeming, the season finale between the collab, the collab between Bev and I, the season finale, a heated debate between myself and Bev, which you'll hear later on. I'm going to give you a bit of a teaser. One of the heated debates is between Jack Steele and Marcus Bonson Pally. You do not want to miss out on hearing that heated debate between Bev and I relating to Jack Steele and Marcus Bonson Pally and plenty more discussions on the season finale between Bev and I that famous collab which you all wanted and you now get it uh, and also we have my final thoughts now we'll start off the show today with this you want me on cameo head to cameo.com forward slash cooper g also you want any of my merch which is attached in the description of this current youtube video head to the website please purchase stubby holes which are currently 15 dollars um and we have all my t-shirts on there and potentially some new t-shirts to be on the website or a t-shirt new t-shirt to be on the website in the upcoming month or so so can't wait to reveal that when i can and the right time to do so and first of all i just want to give a thank you to every one of you who has bought a cameo from me and any of my merch it really means a lot to see um you purchasing it which means you care about me and stuff i do i really do appreciate that but now go from thanking people to, to banging on about people Please welcome the world famous segment, Scoops Goes Bang. Yes, I had my own sound effects because I'm getting angry. And there's a few reasons why. A trolls, 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 trolls. You don't like what I say, don't watch. Scroll past, simple as that. That's what people say. Uh, this tool sent me a message the other day. It says, seriously, is in, this isn't relating to anything I post. He wrote, seriously, is this a piss take? My response to this troll was this. The only, um, by the way, this guy's profile picture was of a beer and his Facebook name, which is clearly a fake name, was Polcat. So this is my response to Polcat, the troll. The only thing that looks like what you say it is, hang on, let me take that back. The only thing that looks like what you say it is, is your actual profile picture and your name. Seriously, you're a troll. The only troll and the only, the only piss take is you having a shit name like that, Polcat, and a picture of beer hiding behind fake identity. 
Mm. Sounds familiar for a lot of trolls these days. Hide behind fake identities. Because they haven't got the balls to do that with their real name and their real face on it. So to those trolls and to that particular idiot, lift your game. And the other final thing I'm going to bang on about today uh, is the umpiring again. I haven't mentioned it for a while. But I'm going to mention it again. Because simply I can mention it every week, but I try not to. But this week I had enough of the umpiring again. Lee Fisher, particular, in particular in the St Kilda game. Um, people can say, oh, here we go. He's blaming St Kilda, he's blaming the umpiring for the loss. No, I'm not. There was plenty of chance where we could have got in front. But there was eight free kicks in a row. Eight free kicks in a row by Lee Fisher to West Coast. In a row. Eight individually he gave to West Coast in a row. People say, oh, he's an excellent Kilda player. Um, he can't be biased or seem to be shown to be biased because he played for them and he would favour them. But I think that's gotten to his head that he's um, having to give praise to the opposition club uh, that St Kilda's playing in. Lee Fisher should not be umpiring a St Kilda game ever again um, because people say he's an excellent Kilda player, he's going to favour them and he's clearly going against them to not look biased. Fisher, fine enough to umpire again, but not a St Kilda game, please, for God's sake. Leo Connolly, a young Saints star who's a great kick on his left and right foot, which is shown against, uh, who was against Adelaide uh, a few weeks ago. Leo Connolly, up forward for some reason. I don't know why, but he was up forward. With about four or five minutes to go, St. Kittle were down by about eight points. Six, actually, it might have been two points, actually. Got his head taken off, screwed, of a free kick right in front of goal with about four minutes to go. Would have put us in front or a few points down. And Lee Fisher, did not give it. Did not give it. 20 seconds later, the Eagles go coast to coast and kick a goal. Uh, Dom Sheed and co. It was ridiculous. Crap umpiring. Cost and kill to the game. The umpiring in general is a joke. Um, it's not always a free kick differential. Some trolls want to say in this particular game, oh, West Coast only had three more frees. It's not about the number, you idiots. It's about where you get them. And Lee Fisher gave eight in a row to West Coast. And that particular one against Le- that didn't go Leo Connolly's way uh, wasn't given. Cost and kill to the game, potentially cost us fine. So, Lee Fish in the umpire department, let your game! So mad about that. Um, I hope you guys enjoyed that edition of Scoops Views Bang. Now, we'll review and preview the rounds just gone. Uh, there were some interesting results in this week's round of footy in round 19. Uh, Port Adelaide over the Pies by 28 points and Marvel, 69 points. Not more, much more to say. Travis spoke in game 300. Congratulations to him, but your power were too good there. Saturday games, North Melbourne, Kanga, 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 Roo, Roo, Roo. The Roos spanked the Blues, um, 77 to 116, by 39 points. Nick Larkey, I've got to mention, what a great performance, kicking seven. Taron Thomas is fantastic, as was Jaden Stevenson, Jai Simpkin, and the whole team, pretty much for the Roos. Carlton will be very disappointed. We'll move on to Brisbane and the Gold Coast. Gold Coast, five to six goals in the second quarter, up by about four or five goals at half time. Then the Brisbane Lions went bang, indeed. 120 to 71, 49 point victory in the Lions. Who would have seen that coming? It's particularly been down by four or five goals at half time, but 49, 49 point victory to the Lions in the end. The Saints and Yeagers, we briefly mentioned that they're 94 to 86. West Coast by eight points, unfortunately, in Perth. Maxi King, what a beast, kicking six, nine plus contestant marks. Maxi King, the nickname Winks, is, is his nickname is Winks for a reason. He's a star. Melbourne and the Western Bulldogs, uh, 85 to the Bulldogs, 65 to Melbourne. Uh, their Bulldogs got the job done and did what they needed to do. Adelaide and the Hawks. Adelaide at Marvel, 19-point victory over the Hawks, 83 to 102. Uh, not much more else to add there other than Tex kicking four. The Swans on Sunday, 98 to 58. And David Mundy's 350th, unfortunately for him, didn't go his way with five from Walters out injured. The Swans are far too good. In the end, by 40 points, started off slow. Picked it up in the end. And at the MCG, Geelong convincingly beat the Richmond Footy Club by 38 points, 95 to 57. Headline by performance by Tom Hawkins, Tom Stewart, uh, Cam Guthrie, Patrick Dangerfield and co. Uh, they were far too good for the Richmond side who, who will be mad, bro, won't you, Dimmer? Uh, and the final game on Sunday, 53 Essendon to GWS 66. A second half turnaround from the Giants now. Even a little bit of a tease here. I'm going to elaborate on this game a bit more in some of the audio messages with some of the people have asked about this game, so we'll get to that later. But uh, GWS were far too good in the second half for Essendon, and GWS are currently in the eight. 
Now, we'll preview the round 20 games. I uh, just want to give an update too. There is no crowds in Victoria for the next two weeks. Headline by Daniel, and- Daniel Andrews. Daniel Andrews' announcement this morning, which is fair enough too, because I don't want to um, take any risk, and it's fair enough. And I mean, the protesters, and trust me, I should have banged on about this. If you protested in the protests in Sydney, in Melbourne, wherever else I was protesting the last week, you are an absolute <laughs> moron. You absolutely are a moron, and you're not worth my time or anyone else's time. And you want to whinge why lockdowns get extended and reasons like that. That is exactly why. For absolute people with inconsiderate, stupid, Pricks. That's what you are. Now, uh, preview around 20 games. At Marble Stadium on Friday night is the Saints and the Blues. Uh, the Saints should regain Jack Higgins, Tommy Highmore, Dan McKenzie. I think the Saints should win. And for people that want to say, why is this on a Friday night? It's because of the five day break. They couldn't have Sydney and Essen coming off five day break. So for people whinging about who's on Friday night, that's why the Saints should be far too good and be a chance to be back in the eight at the end of the round or close enough. Uh, Saturday at Ballarat at 12.20, we've got the Bulldogs in Adelaide. you think the Bulldogs should be too good there. Uh, at 1.15, also on Saturday at Bloodstone Arena in Tasmania with a crowd of 10,000 capacity, uh, North Melbourne and Geelong. I think Geelong will win, but North Melbourne are performing like a top eight side at the moment last month. Uh, but I'm going to go for Geelong in that one. But the Roos will give them a shot in Tassie, and I wouldn't be shocked if North win. Uh, this venue at the moment, as of this recording, is too big to turn, but at 3.10 on Saturday at the Gold Coast in Melbourne, uh, you think Melbourne should win that one? Collingwood and West Coast 415 on Saturday at the MCG. Oh, really tough one. Collingwood to get some players back. Jeremy Howe, Oscar Nelliot, I'm gonna and Chris Main potentially. I'm gonna go for the pies. I really am. Uh, but Wiggles have been a bit better the last two weeks. Um, Saturday night at the Gabba, we've got Essendon and the Swans. I'll go the Swans there in a close one. Sunday games in Tasmania at 210. Hawks, Lions will go the Lions. 3.10 at venue to be confirmed as this recording is recorded. GWS and Port Adelaide, I'll go the... Oh, I'm going to go the Giants, actually. Um, and to wrap up the round on Sunday, 5.10 at Optus Stadium. Victorian time, this is. The Dockers and the Tigers. Despite missing five and Walters, I will go the Dockers. Now, we will go through my rolling all-Australian team, and I'm sure it's going to be heavily, heavily... Debated. I'm just getting it up here as we speak. Um, yeah, so it's it'd be interesting to see what you guys think on my side. Uh, it's been a few changes to the team potentially or not. Uh, you're going to hear it right now. So we're going to start off with the back six is Jake Lloyd, Stephen May, Isaac Cumming, Jack Crisp, Tom Stewart, Daniel Rich for his because he's a rich boy and Jack Crisp with his Crisp's disposal, <laughs> as people like to point out. Tommy Mitchell, only ones on the wing. Yes, I know they're not wingmen, but there's so many good inside mids at the moment that they can't fit them all in the few centre spots, so they're on the wings. As is Jack Seals, the centreman, because he's a man of steel. Uh, half forward line, Sam Walsh and Rory Laird, and centre forward is Tex Walker. I know Laird and Walsh aren't playing forward also, but so many great mids, got to push them there. And plus the, the real AFL Selection committee, Brown, um, rolling Australia, uh, Australian committee can put plays there. Also, can I feel they keep asking? Harry Mackay, I was thinking about taking out. He's the Coleman medal leader, potentially could miss this week as well. I've kept him in because of his leading the Coleman. And Tom Morgan's a full forward, and Bailey Fritch in the other forward pocket. Uh, the Ruckman is still Sean Darcy. I did debate whether putting Brody Grunny back in the side, but I've stuck with Sean Darcy. Uh, another great game on the weekend. Uh, sharing the Ruck this time, though, with Lloyd Meek. Uh, the set other Rovers are uh, Toy Camilla and Jackson Mitch Cray. And an unchanged interchange bench, Luke Parker, Zach Merritt, Carl Amon, and Ben Keyes. So the over- overall changes for the round eight from the round 18 All Australian for the round 19 rolling All Australian team is nothing. In, nil, out, nil. There is no change to the rolling All Australian team for round 18. Let me know your thoughts down below who should be in there. I mean, some people are going to say Marcus Bont and Pally, um, but. Yeah, I don't agree with that. Now, we'll go through my Brownlow votes, which people love hearing about, and I'm going to reenact it like Gill. <clears throat> Round 19, Adelaide v Collingwood. Collingwood v Grundy, one vote. Collingwood, J. Crisp, two votes. Adelaide, W. Drew, three votes. Carlton v North Melbourne. North Melbourne, J. Stevenson, one vote. North Melbourne, 
T Thomas, two votes. North Melbourne and Larky, three votes. Brisbane v Gold Coast. Brisbane, Jay Danaher, one vote. Brisbane, Jay Lyons, two votes. Gold Coast v Furini, three votes. West Coast v St Kilda. West Coast, D Sheed, one vote. St Kilda, Z Jones, two votes. St Kilda, M King, three votes. Western uh, Melbourne v Western Bulldogs. Melbourne, C Oliver, one vote. Bulldo Western Bulldogs, C Daniel, two votes. Western Bulldogs, J McRae, three votes. Adelaide v Hawthorne. Adelaide, R. O'Brien, one vote. Hawthorne, T. Mitchell, two votes. Adelaide, R. Laird, three votes. Sydney v. Fremantle, or Fremantle. Sydney, J. Kennedy, one vote. Sydney, L. Parker, two votes. Sydney, I. Heaney, three votes. Geelong v. Richmond. Geelong, T. Hawkins, one vote. Geelong, C. Guthrie, two votes. Geelong. P. Dangerfield, three votes. Essendon v. GWS. GWS. S. Taylor, one vote. GWS. T. Green, two votes. GWS. L. Whitfield, three votes. The leaderboard after round 19 is as of, as of, as of right now. This is the leaderboard as it follows right now. A new person in the top part of the leaderboard, combined with Ollie, tied with Ollie Wines on 21 votes, is the new addition to the top Part of the leaderboard is Rory Laird from the Crows and Well Deserved. Tied also on 22 votes is Jack Steele and Sam Walsh, unchanged there. It now equals second with Toy Miller on 27 votes is Tom Mitchell after regain, uh, gaining two votes this round. And now a runaway leader, seven ahead of Toy Miller and Tom Mitchell on 34 votes from the Western Bulldogs is Jackson McRae. Now let me know your thoughts down below, guys, on the rounds votes for this round and the overall leaderboard. This is heating up. With four rounds to go. Now, we're going to go through some of your audio messages. G'day, Scoops. Long time listener, first time caller. Hey, I was just wondering if you had to choose one of these great small forwards, which one would you choose? Here we go Eddie Betts, Sil Rioli, or Stevie Milne. Cheers, mate, and uh, hope this podcast goes well. Thank you for your question. Uh, which small forward would I choose out of Cyril, Eddie, and Stevie Milne? Really, really hard. I rate Stephen Milne and Eddie Betts as the two best small forwards of my time. Uh, it's really hard to pick. But uh, when it's really hard to pick, I lean towards my Saint Stephen Milne. What a great uh, small forward Milne was. We'll move on to the next question. We've got a lot of questions today, guys. I really do appreciate all the questions. Here's the next uh, one. Tommy Tucker from Upper Beaky here. Uh, based on current form, who would you rather have in your team? Skunk Membry or the Big Sue Larky? Cheers, mate. Tim Membry or, as people may not know, the Sue Larky is Nick Larky on the Bruise app. No, Tim Membry. Next question. Hey, Cooper. Uh, big big fan of the show. Um, I'll keep it brief. Um, I was just wondering, I had two questions. Uh, the first one was, uh, where do you think the Saints will finish this year? Uh, really keen to um, hear it on the podcast. Uh, and secondly, um, more of a slightly personal, but I've got uh, one of my best mates, Thomas Palmer, who you actually did a cameo for previously that he loved. Um, now he's recently got engaged and, uh, when the wedding comes around, um, as his potential best man, uh, I was just wondering if I flicked you a wedding invite and, uh, you know, COVID was looking a bit better, do you think you'd be able to make it? Um, anyway, love the show. Um, and so does Tom. Um, so yeah, just, uh, good luck with the podcast tomorrow. Thanks. Thank you for the question. I really do appreciate it, especially the first one. Um, where I think St Kilda will finish this year. Uh, eighth or ninth? I honestly think it'll be eighth or ninth. Uh, it could be a percentage thing that costs us the eighth spot. Um, see how we go this week against Carlton. Get the win there. And if a few results, again, go our, go our way this round, um, never know. It could be eighth spot again. But Sydney and Geelong and Freeman will after Carlton this week. So be interesting to see how it goes. In terms of the winning invite, unfortunately, I'm going to have to decline. Um, clearly, but uh, I do really appreciate the uh, offer. But um, yeah, unfortunately, it's a no. But I uh, wish Thomas Palmer 
all the best in his uh, upcoming wedding with his girlfriend. Oh, with his now wife, obviously. We're on the next one. <laughs> Scooper, wonderful to have this chance, lad. Um, huge fan of the show. Been a dream of mine for probably three or four months to um, one day feature on the podcast. Um, so, yeah, here we go, lad. Hopefully it gets through. Um, big fan of the show, as I've said. Here's a predicament for you, my friend. Start one, bench one, delist one. Max King, Nick Rewalt, and Tony Lockett. Have a request as well. Um, I'd like you to reenact my least favourite goal of all time. Qualifying final, 2006, Subiaco Oval. Michael O'Loughlin with the sealer. Celebration and all, if you could. Um, thanks so much, Scoops. Quick shout out for my friend Thomas Palmer. He's an enormous fan of the show. Um, actually, is the reason I, I follow the show so closely and really got into it. He's such a big advocate of yours. And um, yeah, I'd love to give a quick shout out to him because I know he'll be listening along. In all seriousness, mate, you're an absolute inspiration. Keep up the great work. Ignore the haters. Be yourself. And uh, yeah, I love your scoops. Appreciate your comments, mate. I really do. Um, and sending a second question in too. Uh, yeah, I'm not going to reenact the Michael Lockman clearly now because hey, I haven't recorded and we can't at the moment. So uh, they'll be on the background release for now. Uh, and about the almost forget the questions you're talking about the listing. And you mentioned three players. You mentioned uh, Stevie, uh, Max King, Nick Real, and Tony Lockett. Uh, I actually forgot what you said. But um, out of the three to be delisting, probably it's really hard. The career of Tony Lockett is one of the best keep. They are the best key forwards of all time. St Kilda and Max King's a future key forward, best key forward, probably the next ten years. So, hmm, don't know. I'm gonna have to pass on that because all three are guns. One's a future gun. One's an all-time great, and one is a great. So I can't split it. But if I have to delist one. Tony Lockett. I don't know. It's really hard to pick. We'll move on to the next question. G'day, Scoops. Long time listener, first time caller, mate. Uh, just been watching a fair bit of the Olympics as of late. Couldn't help but notice the Australian swimming coach losing the plot yesterday. And it just made me wonder a passionate Saints fan like yourself, what's the best celebration you've ever had after a big Saints win? Who was it against? And uh, how hard did you go, mate? Yeah, uh, so the best, uh, not really one to over exaggerate in terms of a celebration, but I suppose, oh, I'm just trying to think, the victory between St Kilda and Geelong a long time ago, I witnessed this game live, was when uh, Jay Gresham ankle breaked Tommy Lonigan, uh, kicked the goal from the bench of the seal that game at Marvel. The crowd was amazing that night at Marvel. And to do it against one of the sides I'm not a fan of in Geelong, um, it was fantastic. Gresh kicked a great seal and St Kilda clearly missed Gresh the last few years. But that was one. Probably also um, the elimination final between St Kilda and Bulldogs. Bulldogs made a small comeback last late last year in the finals. But, oh, no, here we go. And then uh, Shay, um, let's say some of the players involved, I couldn't remember now. But there was a passage late in the game where a few Saints players put their body on the line to save us the game. And, uh, yeah, it was more nerves in the end, but uh, I was excited after the siren had went and uh, obviously progressed further in the final series last year. And that was a great moment also. But I'm not an over-the-top celebrator, to be honest. You may think that through my post, but just an in-person celebration, not really, to be honest. But uh, if I had to pick two games, it'd probably be the few. I think we've got time for one more, I think. Yeah, g'day, Coops. It's uh, Mason from Packenham here. Just a quick question. Love your work on the podcast, mate. But I was just wondering, where do you see yourself in five years? Really hope you go on to bigger and better things. Cheers, mate. Thanks, Mason. Uh, yeah, where I see myself in five years. Hopefully, continuing to do this type of show, um, but also to be progress higher through the club ranks, AFL media ranks, uh, Fox 40, Channel 7. Any of the like, it would be great, but uh, we'll have to wait and see. We've got one more final question. Again, appreciate all the questions. And just a follow-up question for you there, Scoops. Just the Dons put together one of the worst halves of footy I think I've ever seen in my entire life, kicking one goal seven. 
Um, and it just made me think of some of the other terrible performances we've seen this year, like St Kilda against Adelaide. And it really got me down. And so I was just wondering, how did you recover after that dismal display? Because I'm in a similar position and I don't know what to do, mate. Can you give us some advice? Thank you for that question. Um, fair enough question, Jess. So how did I recover? I don't think I did, to be honest. It was until we had the buy of the week after that, which sucked and made it worse, made the feeling worse. And then, uh, yeah, then we came back, had that victory against Richmond and Brisbane. And uh, I suppose the next win motivated me again to be uh, excited. And the chances of finals was clearly away. And we were vested. And Essendon, they're a big tease, aren't they, mate? They just, they could let you down every time. Just remember the number, six, over 6,100 plus days since Essence won a final. So completely different scenario. People, now people want to mention, I think it was last flag. Well, at least we won a final recently. But uh, yeah, mate, it's tough. Um, obviously, you want to hope that Essence get the win against Sin this week will be hard. But um, yeah, just get get confident for the next win. And uh, you're still in the finals chance. So I have to wait and see, mate. But uh, yeah, just be motivated and wait for your next victory whenever that will be, whether that's this week or in a few weeks coming. You want to hope it's for the end of the year. I uh, appreciate everyone that sent it through your audio questions. We'll now move on to, you know what? Bev from the Bev Show. What I'm dubbing as the season finale, the chat between Bev and I. And please remember, there is a heated debate between Bev and I about Jack Steele and Marcus Bontefale. So you don't want to miss out, out on that. And you're going to find that, that and plenty more right now. Please enjoy and leave your comments down below what you think of the Bev collab and I, the season finale. Now move on to the segment called The Quiz. Now we're going to see who's the quiz master. Is it Bev or myself? Leave your comments down below what you think. We'll see how we go. Now, Bev, your three questions start now. What number does Toby McLean wear for the Western Bulldogs? Uh, 16. What number does Jack Steele wear for the St Kilda? Uh, nine. What number does Sean Darcy wear for Fremantle? Uh, 21? I don't know. 21. Cut that. Bev. No, that was number four. Sean Darcy is number four. So you got three right. 26 questions. You got six seconds. Toby McLean answer was correct. I was hoping you'd get that right. Number 16. And uh, Jack Steele is number nine. So, uh, yeah, I've got 26 seconds. And to hopefully now I'll get three out of three to beat to make the time irrelevant. Bev, off you go. All right. First question. Name the two AFL stadiums in Tasmania. Long, uh, U- Utah Stadium and Bloodstone Arena. Which teams have won the most AFL premierships? Carlton. Uh, yeah, no, yeah, Carlton. And final question, which year was Marcus Bond and Pelly drafted? 2015. All right, let's go through your answers. Uh, so the first question you got correct, uh, name the two AFL, t- AFL stadiums in Tassie, and you correctly guessed Blundstone Arena and New Taz Stadium. The second question was which teams have won the most AFL premierships. Now, you said Carlton, which is correct, but you didn't say Essendon as well, so... Should it be a half, maybe? I'm not I'm not hundred percent sure how we, we should do this. Yeah, uh, I'll give it because you said we got one of the sides correct. We'll go with two. Now what was okay. be a, what's the third one? The third one was which year was Marcus Bonapelli drafted? You said 2015, I believe. It's 2013. So a couple of years off. Oh. Damn it, Bond. Chicken, you wonder why I don't rate him. <laughs> you don't rate him. Oh, uh, I mean, as, as some do, Bear, but um, he's obviously a great player. But uh, so we both got two out of three, but I had to beat 26 seconds. Now, my producer tells me uh, that I had 28 seconds. So unless he's been cheating because he's a fan of yours, Bev, to let you win, uh, you're the quiz master by two seconds. Right. I, re- I reckon my questions were a little easy, to be honest, because... Uh... I, I, I tend to know some of the numbers because I obviously learn them for commentary, although I, I didn't know the Sean Darcy one and I've got Frio this week, so I'm glad you told me that. It's, um, yeah, I could have got, I was thinking of 
plays literally off the top of my head. I thought, right, Bulldogs, St Kilda, whoever. Then Sean Darcy was one, and glad I got that one right for you, but oh, wrong for you. Uh, now we'll move on to. All right, we're going to recall some famous recent footy moments. And, uh, well, I have to talk about the Dogs in Sydney because that's, uh, well, my favourite AFL grand final, one of my favourite sporting moments. And, uh, well, that year uh, the Dogs finished, uh, they finished seventh on the ladder. Uh, They lost to Frio in round 23. I didn't think they would be winning the premiership that uh, that final series, but they did. They beat the Swans and uh, it was... uh, one of the more famous uh, footy moments in, in recent history, of course, a drought broken, the first uh, flag since 1954. There were some some big moments in that uh, in that grand final that uh, led the Dogs to a win, probably no famous than uh, Tom Boyd's goal. But uh, is that one of your favourite, if not your favourite, AFL grand final, Cooper? Um, well, you put me on this morning being a, being a Western Bulldogs moment. Um yeah, no, it was a very good moment, and BT summed it up perfectly. But Bev, I think you can sum it up just as good as what BT did, if that's even possible. Yeah, maybe. I don't know. I don't know. I'll actually, I'll tell you what, Bruce's call of Liam Pickett, uh, the damn ball was busted. That's probably one of my favourite calls of, of all time. Like, that just sums it up, like, straight away. Like, the damn ball was busted that, that year, and... Um, yeah, it was uh, an an enormous an enormous moment. Um, that is that is for sure. I remember what, I didn't actually get to go to the game, unfortunately, but I was watching it at home with my dad. So that was a a very special moment for me as a supporter. Yeah, that was a great moment for you. But the, probably one of the best moments to, for me is all the way back in two thousand and nine, Bev, in round fourteen, St Kilda v Geelong at Marvel Stadium. Or it was then Eddie Head Stadium or the Telstra, whatever you want to call it. Then probably not even Eddie Head either, but um. Yeah, look, that was a great moment for me. St Kilda and Geelong were both undefeated, as I said, 13-0. and 0. Who was going to go 14-0? and 0? Um, And that famous moment for St Kilda fans all the way back in 2009 in round 14 was that courageous, you know, mark from Michael Gardner. And he had tra- that great mark over Harry Taylor. And uh, I think he got knocked out, I think, Harry Taylor. And uh, I love that moment, not not obviously Harry Taylor getting concussed, but that moment of Harry of um, Michael Garner taking that great mark and then he slotted the goals pretty much directly front 10 metres out, put the Saints in front about 40 seconds to go and I'll never forget that moment when Michael Garner pulled out the tongue when he kicked out the goal. That was uh, awesome. I love that moment. Um, it's a moment I'll remember forever. And uh, I was actually at that game, Bev, so um, it was great yeah. to see back and... Uh, moment for Saints fans to remember and uh, you won't mention that grand final that year either. <laughs> I'm glad you didn't mention the, the preliminary final that year as well. But was that the game that is arguably the, the best AFL game we, we've seen, um, uh, in, uh, especially last decade? Is that is that the one that, uh, that we're talking about? Yeah, the 2009 one. Yeah, I'd probably yeah. say that is one of the best. Bev, yeah, 2009 round 14. So it was 13 and 0 going in. It was going to go 14 and 0. And obviously, it ended up being coincidentally that those two sides were in the grand final. Uh, they were the two clear standout sides that year, and uh, yep. obviously, the final went a different direction to that round fourteen clash, um, which I'm never going to mention on here. But uh, yeah, I never liked that toe the fluke. Um, yeah, but look, Bev, there's one moment, one moment I want to mention here. Since you gave me a little little comment about St Kilda before, uh, I'm going to mention you about the whistle. Was you mentioned that you've been teasing it, and off air you mentioned it. The 09 and 010 prelims, um, St Kilda Bulldogs both went to St Kilda's way. The one I remember the most also was Nick Rewald taking a similar toe poke ish type shot in the goal square, Bev. Obviously, that would have been heartbreaking for you as well. That match and the result of that match was probably the most disappointing result I've I've felt as a as a doggies supporter, just because the dogs came so close. Like they were in front at one stage. Well, I think it was deep in that fourth quarter, actually, with about six minutes to go. And then somehow St Kilda's uh, put themselves in front and won the game by uh, by 10 points. And we were very close to making the grand final against Geelong that year, but uh, not close enough. So, um, yeah, it's a bit of a hurtful, hurtful result, that one. But I guess it's uh, it's made a bit better by the fact that I've seen a flag since, which is um, which is good. But still, it's a, it's a yeah, that, that the 09 and the 2010 preliminary finals, I do remember fairly well. Yeah. 
I want to mention, Bev, about, since we mentioned those years around 09, 010, was the score review. It, obviously, it was never brought in. Then Tom Hawkins hit the post. And that, um, I said I wasn't going to mention it, but now I am. The 09 grand final when Tom Hawkins, I'm not going to mention the ending, just this particular moment, but um, when Tom Hawkins hit the post and the score review, this is one thing that always annoys me is they brought in the score review after it happened. And then in 2010, with the draw, they got rid of the, you know, the week after the game. You had, now you have extra time. Um, I just hated that, Bev. I did not like it at all. They changed the ruling two years in a row after something happened in Queensland. Yes, it was against St Kilda, but they always say even now it's, this is going to cost the team a grand final. Well, it could have cost St Kilda two grand finals in a row. The, if A lot of people are saying, Bev, when the drawn grand final against Collingwood in 2010, St Kilda had all the momentum. Brendan Goddard, Lenny Hayes, how great they were. You know, the momentum was with St Kilda. Had there been five extra minutes or however long there would have been, they could have won. But it uh, was not to be. And uh, it's a thing I'll always never forget. But, I, guess they uh, say that, I guess they say it takes uh, it takes a couple of moments to uh, to change things. And well, that Hawkins goal was the, yeah, the oh, sorry, the Hawkins um well, the goal that was paid that hit the post, uh, that, that that was, a, yeah, basically the, the introduction or what made the introduction to the score review and and same with what happened, I guess, in the, in the 2010 grand final. So, um, yeah. And we'll move on to some of your fan questions. Yes, you've always said you want to ask Bev and I a question. Well, now is your chance. So now I put a post up a few nights ago to put out your questions. And you wanted them answered. I have got some, and we will answer some of them because surprisingly, as Bev and I were probably chatting before, there's some actually some good and decent questions now. Obviously, there was always going to be a few stupid questions, and we will not be going through them. But uh, there's some very good questions, so we're going to go through some of them. Right now, we'll go through some of them, Bev. Oh, this is not recording, Braden, by the way. Um, we'll have a look. Um, I've just got some, I'll just quickly see which ones you want to say are fine for. Uh, the Bont Steel debate, we'll definitely do that. Um, opinions on what's happening with Richmond. Is that fine with that one? Yep. yep. Uh, we kind of mentioned this earlier, but someone said, we'd love to see the two of you commentating a Saints Bulldogs game together. Um, and this one you probably want to ask me this. Uh, hey, Bev, why does Scoops hates the dog so much? Mm-hmm. And then, then there's probably another one. Scoop, can you ask Bev if you think the dog's free ride from the arms should be investigated? Oh, God. <laughs> Your fan question. Now, the first question, Bev, uh, we probably can both answer this. Font and Pally versus Jack Steele. Who is better and why? So why do you think Font and Pally's better? Well, I think Marcus Font and Pally is better. He's won a flag. Uh, I feel like he's uh, a bit more, maybe maybe in recent years anyway, a bit more uh, consistent than Jack Steele. Um but obviously, Jack Steele's been superb this season, and and uh, he's up there for the Brownlow races as well as Marcus Bond and Pelly. But I reckon you've got a different view. Yes, I do. Uh, also, with both our teams involved, there's always a difference of opinions in there, Bev. But uh, I'll go Jack Steele. He's a man of steel, as I always say. He um, runs runs with his name clearly. But uh, no, obviously, he's an inside ball. He, he's pretty good with his efficiency too for a player. As I said, the top players like him and Nat Fife and. Uh, Martin and Dangerman and all that, they don't have the best efficiency. But Jack Steele's always hanging around the 75-plus efficiency with for someone that gets over 30 possessions a game is pretty good. And, I mean, Bon and Pelle has some great moments as well. Pelle uh, is a bit better kick um, and distance kick, but Jack Steele's contestant beast. And, I mean, they're both great, but, you know, I'm going to say Jack Steele. And he was, I think, top five in the Brown there last year, and I'm sure he'll be around that mark again this year, particularly off his last three weeks. He'll probably get three threes in the Brown line the last three weeks. But, uh, yes, Jack Steele, I feel, is better. They're both great, but better. Now, I'm going to answer this question for both of us, Bev. Your opinions on what's happening at Richmond, Bev? I think injuries is, is playing a real factor this season, um, but you can't you can't blame the injuries. Um, you can't just blame the injuries altogether because a lot of teams have injuries and, and some are doing better than others. But... Um, yeah, I don't know. Maybe they've lost their hunger. I don't know. Um, I, fe- I felt like the game against Collingwood, the three quarters, they actually started to to, to play like we've actually seen uh, in recent times in their flag years. Um, but obviously that last quarter, Collingwood came home with a with a big ride. So, um, yeah, just a combination of injuries and, and and maybe just being exposed a little bit as well by other teams. What, what about you? 
Yeah, I agree. I think they've been exposed a lot. They've been too reliant on a few players in that. Yeah, they've been exposed all right. There. They've had a few injuries um, unlike, or like a lot of sides. So, I mean, it, it is an excuse. Uh, they had Nan Kerbis out the last few weeks as well, which is a key ruckman, obviously. Uh, but, you yeah, know, as David King and a few others have said, the dynasty is over. Um, and I think Dim is getting a bit angry and uh, we're frustrated with that. And uh, I think he's just annoyed that he's been so, you know, consistent in their side, or well, the side's been so consistent. He's been, what's the word? He's been relaxed, you know, and he expects that they're going to continue to be good. And now they've pretty much done the complete opposite. And uh, you can't handle that as well at the moment and handle the pressure that, he hasn't really had for three years at least. So, yeah, now, along with West Coast, I think they're cooked, Bev. I think they're cooked. Now, the next question, a few more we're going to go through. Hey, Bev, why does Scoops hate the Bulldogs so much? I didn't even know you hated the Bulldogs. <laughs> so that's news to me. That's what some said. I mean, I think they just go off some of the comments. I mean, okay, some games where some teams may get a few uh, dodgy calls given their way against the other side. I think there would have been a few games, Bev, where Bulldogs had some of them, not so bad recently, but in the last few years or so, where I may have put a comment where when I put the match review post up, I might say the team plus three in reference to the umpire. So that may be why. But uh, look, there's a lot of teams this year, look at uh, Essen. I don't like Essen. Well, I've just admitted that now, but people know that. So, I mean, they've been screwed up a few times by umpire in the game against Richmond in the Dreamtime match. A few other teams. So, I mean, it's all around. The umpire in general, I haven't been a fan of this year at all. But, uh, yeah, they apparently I hate the Bulldogs so much. I mean, not necessarily going to say who, but there's a few more teams I hate above the Bulldogs. That's what I will say there. Uh, we'll move on. There's a few more questions we've got here. Uh, this question is, if the Saints and Bulldogs both make the grand final, will you both do a live commentary version of it? Uh, well, I'm not sure. If, they make, if the Dogs make the grand final this year, I'll probably try and go, to be honest. Um, but, um, yeah, I don't know. I don't know. Yeah, I don't know. I think, I mean, if we're both in the ground, I think I'll be going as well. So it'd be almost impossible to do that. It could be a live reaction type video, but in terms of a commentary, mm. pop, oh, we want to enjoy the moment, especially when our sides aren't in the grand final every year. No sides in the grand, no team is in the grand final every single year. Um, so no, we want to witness the moment ourselves, and uh, if not, watch it at home and watch the actual game, not focus on commentary as well. But uh, in terms of general games, maybe who knows? But uh. The grand final, probably not. Now, we'll move on to the final question, which is a similar type question, Bev. But um, this question, where is it? I've just lost it. I ask Bev, who is more passionate, you with your Saints or him as he, in his doggies? What, what do you <laughs> oh, I, have, I have no idea. I have no idea, to be honest. Um, but, I mean, passion's a part of sport, and everyone has passion for their teams. And, and I mean, I show it on video, but uh, I'm sure there are people out there that have the same passion as me. Just don't put it to a video. So, um, yeah, I don't know how to answer that, but I definitely am very passionate about the teams that I support. That's for sure. Yeah, no, we're both obviously passionate, Bev. And, uh, yeah, I just want to mention to a few comments here, Bev. Uh, people say the few biggest crossover event ever this is. I've been in a lot of comments like that. They, As I said earlier, they wanted it. They've now got it. Now, Bev. Before you go, and I appreciate you coming on, kick it to scripts. So really do appreciate it, Bev. But we can't leave without a woohoo, you beauty. Woohoo, you beauty! Go to the doggies. That's it. Uh, now, as I always enter the end of my show, I'll say most importantly, go Saints. Now, Bev, I want to thank you for coming on the show. It's <laughs> not a thumbs down. It's a thumbs up. <laughs> um, it's a woohoo, you beauty moment, Bev. But uh, Bev, I want to appreciate you for coming on the show and taking some time out of your very busy schedule. No worries. Uh, guys, you got the collab you wanted. You've seen the fantastic trailer my uh, producers have lined up and uh, you got what you guys wanted. So thanks for joining us, everyone. Have a great one. All the best. And most importantly, go Saints! Well, there you have it. That was the collab, the season finale collab between Bev and I. I hope you guys really did enjoy that. If you want any more collabs between myself, Bernie, Bunkett with a burnout, anyone else at all in the future, or any just straight up interviews, please let me know in the comments below uh, what you think and what you want. And I'll see, depending on who they are, if we can get it sorted. But now, again, I appreciate Bev for coming on the last few weeks. Uh, Bev, you're an absolute beast. I really appreciate that. And uh, keep doing what you're doing, Bev. Everyone, 
I mean, Bev's on a hiatus at the moment due to the Olympics, but uh, always tune into the Bev show every Tuesday night at 8.30 p.m. after my show. Coincidentally, it's back-to-back of from 7.30 till 9.30, two hours plus of great content for you guys. But Bev's on hiatus for the next few weeks, but he'll be doing little clips here and there. But after that, please tune into the Bev show and uh, watch Bev because he, like myself, he's great viewing to watch. Now, the goal reenactment, I mentioned at the earlier show, the Sam Lloyd goal reenactment after the sign against the Swans at the G a long time ago when Sam Lloyd played for, played for Richmond. You're going to see my goal reenactment, which I, again, filmed a long time ago before lockdown. Uh, so please let me know what you think. And uh, you're going to watch me kick the shot after the siren like Sam. To win the game! He's got it! The Tigers have won by a point! A kick after the siren! They've gone bananas at the G! Oh. Richmond have won by a point! Every kid dreams of this opportunity! Wow, there was my take on reenacting Sam Lloyd's goal after the sign for Richmond against the Swans of the G a long, long time ago. Yes, it wasn't at the MCG, uh, but I tried my best at it, and I think I nailed it to perfection. And yes, trials, it was first shot. You don't believe me? Don't care what you think. It was first shot. Uh, yeah, and I loved it. I hope you guys enjoyed that goal reenactment. Any more goal reenactments you want in the future, you know what to do. Send them down below, and I'll mention them. A few things I want to mention before we go today. Uh, in my final thoughts is you want me on Cameo, head to cameo.com forward slash Cooper G. Also, my merch, as I mentioned, is on the website live now. The stubby holes are on there at the moment for $15. A lot of people have purchased them so far, so I really do appreciate that. Appreciate everyone that's bought the stubby holders. The mugs, as yes, the mugs are still available. Uh, and the t-shirts are always there. And hopefully I've got a new t-shirt design on the way within the next month or so. I can't wait to reveal that when I can and the time is right for it. But also, I have a huge guest on the show next week, and I mean a huge guest on the show. Uh, I said I would give a hint on the show tonight, and I am. The hint is Fox footy. What's that mean? Fox footy what? Well, no, it's not Tom Morris, but uh, Fox footy is the hint. I hope you guys enjoyed this show today. Enjoy the goal reenactments. I've enjoyed everything on the show today, on the show tonight. Uh, Till next week, everyone, have a great one. And most importantly, go the Saints!